Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Santinetti. And on today's broadcast, we're looking at the Word of God as always. You know what? A friend of mine said when he visits here to Talk Straight Bible, every day is Sunday. So I thank you for that. And I pray that you would be able to just dig into the Word of God with us today. We got four parts looking at here because you know what? I was looking and uh, at all the stuff that, you know, just studying and writing. There's a lot of food. So uh, we're going to do this in four parts this week, maybe five. But we're looking at uh, Ephesians chapter 3, and we're looking at verse 8 through 11. But today we're going to deal with verse 8, okay? And uh, we talked about it last week, but we're going to go back into it. And uh, it says this in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8 through 11. This grace was given to me, I being less than the least of all the saints, to preach the gospel of the unsearchable riches of Christ among the nations, and to bring to light all what is the fellowship of the mystery having been hidden from eternity in God, the one creating all things through Jesus Christ, so that now to the rulers and to the authorities in the heavenlies might be made known through the assembly the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The first thing I want you to understand about this particular verse of Scripture is that Paul gives us another picture of what humbleness is. Now, we spoke about it last week, but here, the humble estate of the Apostle Paul was that grace was given to him. And he says, it was given to me. And we talked about how this gospel is personal. How this gospel has to be given to you. It has to to become your gospel. It has to become your preaching the gospel because it is your calling. Remember that the Bible says after Jesus came out of the desert, He passed by the Sea of Galilee. He was walking by the Sea of Galilee and he saw Peter and Andrew and they were fishing. And he called them and the Bible says that they dropped their nets and followed him. And the Bible says he went a little further and he saw John and James, two brothers, they were mending their nets and he called them and they dropped their nets, left their father and followed Jesus. And then one day Jesus was walking and he walked by the tax collector's booth where Levi, Matthew, was sitting and he was doing his work. And he passed by, looked at Matthew and said, follow me. Two words that was recorded in the mind of Matthew, the tax collector. And he left that position and began to follow Jesus. It has to be a personal call. I believe in the calling of God. Many people today are walking outside of their calling. Many people are not doing anything with the calling. Many people don't know where they're called to because they have not yet thrust in. They have not sought the Lord's face to see exactly what God wants them to do. Now, remember I mentioned that the word face is 180 means this. In the Hebrew, face amounts to 180. And I thought about this, and I said, well, isn't it interesting? When the Bible says, God says, seek my face, it is to turn 180 degrees and go in the opposite direction, meaning that we're going one way, and God says, come and seek me. We need to turn halfway, go back, and go toward him. It's not a 360-degree turn. Because otherwise, you'll wind up in the same place you left. God's repentance is 180 degrees in the other direction. And so when we see the Apostle Paul, he says, the grace, this grace was given to me. And here is another instance of the Apostle Paul's humility. Although he was a great scholar, a philosopher, a teacher, he looks at himself in a low estate because of the hand that took him to do the work unto the Gentiles. The calling to the Gentiles brought him to a place of humility. What? Why not I, Paul, the apostle, who is well known among the Jews, 
They know that I am a Pharisee of Pharisees, according to him in Philippians chapter 3. I am a Hebrew of Hebrews. I am from the tribe of Benjamin. And the reason he mentions Benjamin is because when they came out, after the book of Joshua, and you go to, you go to the book of Judges, you will find out that when the, when the, uh, the, the Israelites separated, ten tribes went one way, but two went the other way, and Judah and Benjamin stayed together. And so we see that it's very important that when you hear the word of God and you have the calling, it is a personal calling. And why not send me to the Jews? I have all that it takes. I know the Torah. I got wisdom now from the Holy Spirit. I can go and turn all of these people around. I can actually convince them that Christ is the Messiah. And God said, no, because they'll kill you. And that's exactly what they wanted to do to Paul. Every time they saw Paul, they heard where Paul was, they wanted to kill him because he was a traitor. But yet God raises up Peter, an ordinary fisherman, <laughs> who was a practicing Jew, and he sends them, God sends Peter to the Jews. You know what's interesting? How God in the Old Testament did something with Jacob before he died. Jacob was blessing his sons, and he, t he Watch this. Joseph was his son, but by then, Joseph was already the governor in Egypt, and he had two sons by an Egyptian woman. <laughs> Get that one. Oh, I, I always think about that one. Excuse me. How Joseph was a governor in Egypt, and he married the daughter of a man called Potiphar, not Potiphar, Potiphar, a high priest from the land of On. So on top of that, he married the, the, the daughter of a high priest and he had two children with him. I, I still don't understand how God works like this, but isn't it something how God still had the Gentiles in mind? And so here Joseph has Manasseh and Ephraim, have Jewish, have Egyptian, and Jacob does something. He went to bless because Joseph wanted his children to be blessed. And, and Jacob crossed his hands and instead of putting it on Manasseh and Ephraim, he crossed his hands. And, and Joseph, seeing this, took his hands and says, Father, you have it wrong. And he didn't have it wrong. He crossed his hands and he blessed them. Why? Because God was going to put Ephraim first because Ephraim means fruitful. But we know that the fruit of the Holy Spirit is important in the life of a believer. But Manasseh means God has caused me to forget. And it is through the Holy Spirit that he causes us to forget. Now watch this. Isn't it interesting? In the New Testament, God crosses hands and takes Peter, a regular fisherman, a layman, who didn't know anywhere the knowledge, or who didn't have anywhere the knowledge that Paul had, and sends him to the circumcision, which is the Jew. And then he takes Paul, who was of the circumcision, uh, circumcision and sends him to the Gentiles. Wow, what a crossing of hands. Don't argue with God and don't doubt God when he crosses things in your life because he will take you from one instance and you say, I should be over there because I can do this. God says, no, I want you to go over here where you can't do it, but what you have is sufficient and efficient enough for you to do the calling of God. And it humbled Paul. And although he is, watch this, although he is humble and realizes that the call is personal, but he says unto me, he realized it is a personal calling and he had a response, he had a personal responsibility to it. So when God invites you into his presence, he also invites you to investigate the presence. For Moses had to investigate where he was called to. Moses saw a light burning on the mountain and it was God's way of drawing him. Come. He says, I, he wanted to know what was up in that mountain. And when he went to up to the mountain, he saw a burning bush and he was intrigued why the bush burned, but was not consumed. And he heard a voice of the Lord saying, Moses, Moses, take off your shoes for the place where you are standing is holy. I want to let you know that God has called you to a place that is holy. 
And the reason he wanted him to take off his shoes is because shoes are man-made. And they probably were Egyptian shoes, who knows? But the thing is, God says, I want you barefooted on my presence. I don't want any made man's shoes in my presence. He did the same thing with Joshua. When, 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 the, when Joshua saw the captain of the host, listen, Jesus was manifested to him. The first thing he tells him, take off your shoes, standing on holy ground. And so here, a personal invitation from God demands a personal investigation. And Paul uses the word, watch this, he says, I became a minister. He uses the word deacon in the Greek, but actually it is a service to the Gentiles. A deacon, according to the book of Acts, watch this now, the people were complaining that the widows and the orphans, they were not getting their, their allotted food or whatever it was during the day. And so they were going to the apostles and they were bringing this problem to the apostles. And the apostles said this to the people, choose among yourselves seven men that are filled with the Holy Spirit and have faith and wisdom and all that wonderful stuff and let them serve tables. Let this be their career. You look it up in the Greek. For he said, it is not good for us to leave the ministry of prayer and the word, a word in the prayer, to serve tables. And so Paul uses, watch this, he uses the word diakonos, deacon, to say he's an apostle, but he's also a humble servant to serve the word of God at the table of the Gentiles. But didn't Jesus do this when he went to Matthew's house? They had a party. And they had tax collectors there. There were sinners there. And even the, the Jews that knew about Jesus, and they were watching him, they said, look, he's sitting with tax collectors and sinners now. And so when God sends you somewhere, don't be concerned about what they are, but whose they are. Because God knows those that are in the midst of this crowd that you preach to, who are going to come out and serve him. And he understood that he had a personal responsibility. And then he understood that the office of apostle was his calling. But this he understood by the gift of grace to minister to the Gentiles. This working was according to the power of the Holy Spirit that was working mightily in him. And this grace transformed Saul, the persecutor, into Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles. Those who heard him could not deny the message of grace that flowed from him. The Christ that appeared to him on the road to Damascus was now spreading out his light, the message of salvation to the Gentiles. The call of grace was so powerful on him that he describes himself in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9. He says this, that he was released to be called an apostle, that he was not meet to be called an apostle because he persecuted the church of God. Paul was simply stating that he was a minister of the gospel who served God in a capacity of a servant. And he said, I came to preach. He went to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. The word preach in the Greek means this. In the, in the Greek word, it's evangelism, evangelium. And he was, watch this, an apostle to the Gentiles, but he was also the evangelist to the, to the Gentiles. And God has called all of us to evangelize the world. It doesn't matter what your world is. It could be in your family. It could be in your family's family. It could be in your job. It could be wherever you are. God wants you to spread the gospel because he has called you to evangelize the, the gospel. He has called you to evangelize the world. The unsearchable riches of Christ. What is that unsearchable riches? It is the tithing the tithings, the good news of the salvation. We're to shout it from the rooftop and announce the messianic blessing that Christ came to the earth to bring blessings, especially the glad tidings of the kingdom of God that was obtained through Christ before the foundation of the world. The mystery that was kept secret was now revealed to the Apostle Paul. Can you imagine? All of the hundreds, thousands of years that went by. 
And not one had the revelation that they were to get up and go to the Gentile nation and be called to stay there. I got to share something with you very quickly. We went to Switzerland one time and we went to do some work there to evangelize. And um, we were invited to go to a drug scene. And I, I, th I believe I gave the testimony before, but the most important thing was that when we went to this place, because we were invited to go and minister, you know, to the drugs, uh, the drug addicts there, they were, they were placed in an abandoned train yard because that's where society puts people when they don't want them. You know, you go over there and do your thing. Well, we finally got in there and we went down there and it was a mess. It was a mess. It stank like, I mean, the stench of death, everything was there. But what hit me the most was after all the, the trials and everything was over, and we, we began to talk. I began to talk to a Muslim that was there. He was actually selling the drugs to the people there. I heard through the, the person that invited us there that there was a monk that used to live among them. In other words, he was there all the time ministering to them. And I found that amazing and never left my mind. And you know, it's like the Apostle Paul. He went into the piss pot. He went to the place where there was garbage. He went to the heathens where there were idol worshiping and there was sensuality, where there was witchcraft and idolatry, where there was all kinds of arts being practiced, where there was lasciviousness and drunk I mean, and drunkenness and it's all kinds of sin. All the sins were being practiced in the Gentile nation. And watch this. He tells this circumcised Jew. He tells this Jew who knew the word, who was a scholar, I want you to go into that place and I want you to live among them. I want you to bring the gospel to them. And he became an evangelist to a people who were not a people. He was instructed to, watch this, he instructed them concerning the things pertaining to salvation and the Messiah. And he wanted to make all men see the light of the gospel. The administration of the new covenant was now being opened to a rejected nation. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And this spiritual day, I'm, I'm saying have a, a wonderful spiritual day. And remember that you are called to go in to the world and preach the gospel. Thank you for stopping by. God bless.